Hey there guys, what's going on? So once again we have reached Friday as we draw closer to the latter stages of March, March 26th to be exact. It was a little bit on the quiet side for this past week, although the feature on the Shins album I did to start things off went remarkably well in my opinion. So, with that in mind, let's build off that success, shall we? Since there have been so many digital reviews and weekly recaps and miniature features around here lately, I figured it was time to do it right and get back to the basics. Namely, the theme that truly got this channel rolling when I decided that I wanted to make it more about music, which of course only means one thing. That's right, folks. It's time for installment number 32 of the Vinyl Corner, featuring Sonic Youth's own Lee Ronaldo. Last night I stopped by your house in the rain But I could see you weren't home Everything comes to a stop up here on Lee Ronaldo is a singer, guitarist, writer, producer, and visual artist who, as I just stated there a moment ago, is best known for being a co-founder of the alt-rock outfit Sonic Youth. Given his longtime proficiency on guitar, he is also known for a variety of efforts related to it, starting essentially from the very beginning of his early projects. Ronaldo started out in the New York area, growing up in Long Island and graduating from Binghamton University. Later on, he stayed there, starting out with several bands, including the Electric Guitar Orchestra of Glenn Branca, before becoming friends with Thurston Moore in the late 1970s. Eventually, Moore asked Ronaldo to join up with he and bassist Kim Gordon, and the rest for Sonic Youth, as they say, is history. But in this case, that's not why you called. To get back to Lee here again, in addition to his highly notable career with Sonic Youth, he has also done solo albums consisting of spoken word and experimental guitar pieces, he's done books in collaboration with wife Leia Singer, books of poems on his own, produced albums for several bands, and has even somehow had the time to be in other bands all along the way. So in yet another continuation of what seems like a busy schedule for Lee Ronaldo, and in wake of what looks to be Sonic Youth's ultimate disbanding, we arrive here today with his most to the point solo effort, Between the Times and the Tides. It's been a long road to get there, and today's question is, does this strike all the right notes, or will we only be left feeling sour? I don't know about you, but I think we're going to learn more about that in today's review. Enjoy. I was traveling light, traveling with a friend, as Christina came of age, I hung with Christina's friends, they would all come round the house. Lee Ronaldo's Between the Times and the Tides is a mixed bag of excellently produced elements from start to finish. For one thing, it quite neatly bottles the lightning and live wire tension of what was Sonic Youth's frenetic experimental rock sound, and channels it into the most up-tempo moments of this record. While Thurston Moore is opted for more intelligently sculpted softness on his solo material, Between the Times and the Tides takes the time to warble, scratch, and bend on even its momentary respite. Ronaldo may have been a bit more in the shadows with his musical operations, but with this new release, he pulls no punches and makes his case to be a capable frontman by shake, rattle, and rolling from the word go. Guitars sizzle and shimmer, organs wail, bass thumps, and drums thrash as Ronaldo vocally channels his best vintage Michael Sight from R.E.M. with a dash of Alejandro Escovado to create a gritty world of dark prod rock that would make the likes of Stephen Malkmus proud. Tell me my love Tell me who it is you're thinking of Whether it's fast or slow, a steady fog-like haze of instrumental delight hovers over this entire record as contributors like Sonic Youth's own Steve Shelley, Wilco's Nels Klein, bassist Erwin Mankin, and jack-of-all-trades Jim O'Rourke make their presence strongly felt in this darkly woven tapestry. Klein especially proves to be a highly appreciated asset, as his solos ring out in their distinctive clamor and his slide playing gets taken to new heights that even his time in Wilco hasn't yielded to yet. It also must be noted that one of the really nice parts amongst many of this record's construction is that while Lee is an older man at the age of 56, who's been active in music since the late 70s, he doesn't write this specifically from the latter half of the road with some intent to convey wisdom as he departs. He doesn't slow down or get too contemplative, rather he kicks it up a notch and delivers an effort that sounds as relevant and biting as anything done by slick young rock bands trying to crack into the indie or alternative genre today. In fact, I think they could truly learn a thing or two from what Between the Times and the Tides accomplishes here. I just saw a rainbow fall into the floor Shattered into your eyes ask what for These days I'm all alone out in the middle of the world. That edge 
education begins with just how many good songs there are here. Off the Wall is a driving rock piece resplendent with ear-catching harmony. Christina as I Knew Her is every bit something eerie gone wrong with a murderer's dark edge. Stranded is sonically deep introspection against a finger-picked background. And Fire Island is a blowout of manic thrash party proportions with pieces of mid-tempo haze. Combine that with songs like Lost and Hammer Blows and you have my favorites from this one, along with a lot of high praise. This is just an all-around solidly formidable record. Ronaldo isn't crafted the next prime candidate for rock and roll history here, but as with all music, there are gems to be found around every corner if you only look hard enough, and this is no exception. Between the times and the tides is darkly raw, rough, brawny, and it makes no bones about flexing its muscle between driving rhythms, gritty instrumental interplay, mysterious lyricisms, and yes, even the occasional acoustic moment. I easily give it an 8.5 out of 10. Alrighty, now as for the vinyl itself, as you can see here, we really have one of the nicer vinyl constructions that I've seen so far in 2012. Uh, courtesy of Matador Records, which shipped this in incredibly quick and awesome fashion. Um, obviously, of course, cover up close. Um, with a very cool, interesting little part to it, the lettering here on Lee Ronaldo Between the Times and the Tides is raised. I know that's not really a big deal, but I thought that that was kind of a uh, cool little thing there. I don't know why. I've never really encountered that before. So I thought that was pretty cool. We have a nice gatefold here with a ton of photos. And the cool part about these photos is that they are all glossy. I don't know if it's supposed to sort of mimic how a photo feels when you touch it, like an old style photo. But everything on here that you feel, it, it's all glossy. Not, not this part here with the little um, description from uh, Lee and some different stuff in there. Um, but all the production photos, all the different things. Um, glossy. I, I don't know, I'm very impressed with that. I've never seen that in a vinyl either. Um, a little reference to uh, the Canadian, uh, what was it, post-hockey riot of last year, uh, somewhere in that time, uh, which I guess is one of the basis, uh, is the, one of the subject matters for one of the songs that he wrote on here. I can't remember it right at this moment. Um, but I thought that those were two really neat features. Um, inside we just have one single disc with the lyrics on both sides to all the songs. I thought that that was very nice as well. Sometimes you don't get that, and I think that's unfortunate. I like having the lyrics, you know, and knowing what they're saying. And inside we have your standard uh, disc. Nothing too thick, but nothing too thin either, right in the middle, like what you would want. Um, got a nice little uh, center label here with the little um, artwork on it, which I thought was another nice little touch. Very nice. And, to make this basically just a quick uh, vinyl review segment other than uh, just your basic download card and uh, stuff like that, that's pretty much all. And surprisingly, that is it and that is all for me today, you guys. I'm not exactly sure how the uh, videos will break down and all the stuff that I recorded today will end up being uh, posted online, but uh, it was a hell of a lot of work. Um, it really paid off. It was a lot of fun to do. And uh, I look forward to hopefully being able to bring these days to you guys more often. But mostly, most of all, I really hope you enjoyed my review of the Lee Ronaldo Between the Times and the Tides album. Um, already, it's definitely uh, another one of my favorites. Very hard to say, of course, at this point how it will rank out when we get to the end of the year. That is a long way off, and there are a lot of other records coming out between uh, now and then. But uh, already, uh, definitely one that I will be coming back to. I think that it is really an outstanding album and it was a pleasure to listen to it and a pleasure to have it on vinyl. Um, well done, well constructed on the part of Matador Records. A great label. I would highly suggest picking it up. Um, well worth it. Great price, great shipping, great listening experience. I highly, highly suggest this one. And until next time, guys, keep your music flowing and your vinyl spinning. As per usual, I will see you all very, very soon.